Hello, welcome to uh, this session. Um, it's really nice to meet everybody through the internet. I'm really happy uh, you, we all get together even through this uh, uh, difficult time. And even we cannot meet each other offline, but I think it's great we can meet each other online. Today, I'm gonna to talk about how to build your own technical pipeline. So my name is Yan, I'm from the Digital Kina. And my role is uh, Director of Development. Uh, we are located in London, Ontario, and in Canada. So as I mentioned earlier, you may didn't hear, is I would like to also know, get to know you a little bit more. Because it's a virtual conference, we have a, a way to get to know each other, not like when we're offline, we can't really talk in the same time. So if you can go to the chat system, typing in which company you come from, what's your role are, and uh, we can you know, have a conversation later. I'm also going to leave a Q&A session end of the uh, session, and we can uh, leave some time for that. When you do questions, can you uh, prefix your question with a Q letter? So let's start. So first off, I'm going to talk about why I'm talking about um, how to build your tech pipeline and why I'm talking about it. And when you demand outspace the supply, there's a lot of uh, companies uh, need Drupal developers, but not all the people go to school. They know uh, they learn Drupal. Uh, a lot of like uh, talent uh, developers, they may not use Drupal before. So that's the one of the reason we need to build our own talent. And also the company grows. As your own, the, when your company growing, and you need more talent developers, um, PMs, and designers, all different roles. And also give back to the community. You're helping foster the growth of the Drupal talent. So then the, the Drupal community more and more Drupal com like developers, so they contribute back to the Drupal community. Even though when you train those developers, they no longer with your company someday, but they still going to benefit the whole Drupal community. Using us as an example, Gigi Akina is a small company one few years ago when we're growing from 15 to 80 plus, which in four to five years. And really quick growing, you can see us, if you've been DrupalCon offline before, you see a lot of people like me wear a jersey, and that's how you recognize us because we're from Canada. <laughs> and the, the, each year you can see our DrupalCon members is growing. We grow so much in the past few years, and 62% uh, of the developers uh, is actually from our internship and co-op programs. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how we build our tech, tech line, the, the pipeline from the Drupal developers, and how we foster that growth environment. Affected the recruitment to the junior developers, sometimes it's even big game before you do the job posting, even before there's a job even opened up. So you need to prepare, even your company now growing right now, and you got prepared for the next few years. Uh, for example, if your company growing in the next two years, you got plan the seeds right now. So how to do that? I'm going to start to talk about in the three uh, points. First, you need to prepare your culture soil and make sure your agency is attractive to the place for the people to come to work with. And the second, I'm gonna talk about how to plant the seeds a roadmap so you can practice yourself as well. And in the end, we want to talk about coaching for the girls. Okay, so the first part, get the culture right. In order to attracting really talented developers, you need to have radical transparency in uh, culture. So when the developer come in, or the, uh, you know, your designers or project managers, they feel like attracted by your company, by your culture. You have a meaningful works because a lot of time interns and co-ops, when they be attracted to them and they actually get into the real practice, it is okay to make mistakes and learn from them. That way this culture build up that learning system. So it's hard to always criticizing the junior developers if you want to attract and then coach them and make sure they grow. 
and also open-minded question. There's no question is a bad question. Always encouraging each other to ask questions and always learning and innovating. So that is another good point to attracting a new talent and also empower to lead. Make sure your uh, employees can present your companies. When they go out there, they are attracting more talent to come to, uh, to your company because they want to work with those uh, talent themselves. It's like a big garden. That's why you see my presentation have a lot of flowers, a lot of trees, and a lot of seeds and trees. Think about your core values and make sure you build that culture. And it's like you, you have sunny days, rainy days, your culture may deal with a lot of different challenges. And with that great culture value you build, it's going to attract more people. So now your soil is ready. So how are we going to go next is plant the seed to make sure they grow and so to foster growth environment. There's a three way today I'm gonna to talk about planting the seed. First, to get to talent to know your company. And second is get to know the talent. And the third is we're going to focus on today is talking about teaching Drupal class in the colleges. So how to get the talent to know your company? A lot of time, if you're a smaller agency, it's hard to you know, compete with a bigger, you know, well-known brand agency out there. And how do you get to know from the students in the universities and colleges, get them to know you? So you can invite the college students or the university student to your company, have a tour. In Kenya, we usually run like a few tours each semester when the school starts. We invite the students who specifically study the program, who are going to be in placement in our company, have a tour. During the tour, we not only have our managers do a presentation, we also get the people who graduate from the same university and do a presentation as well and answer the student questions. So they can connect, they can see their possibilities. Then they finish school, they say, oh, I don't have to only be a, you know, a C++ developer or a Java developer. I can learn PHP, I can become a Drupal developer, I can become a technical coordinator, I can become a project manager. There's so many opportunities for me, but until they see their previous like students who graduate from the same school or even same program and had that experience, it's going to really help them to launch in the future. They may not get hired by you now, but in when they graduate in three to four years, they are your future employees. So also hosting events uh, in your company. For example, we host Lindux, uh, UX meetups events. Those events are going to have your local talent come over to your company, not only get the tour, also get to know your company's uh, staff. So because your staff sometimes do a presentation and they will have a lot of interactions, they'll get a feeling of your culture. Also spend, uh, you know, sponsor events. Sponsor events like this, Drupalcon, sponsor events like Hackathon, and also tech, all sorts of technical events in your local. When you sponsor those uh, events, you sometimes you get asked to speak for the events as well in the local college and universities. We usually take the chance, go to talk to the students and presenting what in the industry, what are we doing right now? What is the sharing the skill sets they may want to focus on or share the experiences really early on. And also posting the co-op jobs and in the college and always participating in the co-op internship program, that's also going to help attracting talent in the future. So now the talent to get to know you. So you also need to get to know the talent. When you're attending those events, for example, I'm attending the computer science events every year. I talk to all the students in the computer science program who are, you know, we walk around, it's big, it's not like an HR function, it's, uh, it's not like a hiring event, it's more like a social event for the student, have a chance to talk to different companies, ask them questions, asking what type of roles in the company, what technology you're using, what the culture look like. So you can get, you ask a lot of students the question as well, you can get know them, you can, you know, in the end, they add you to the LinkedIn, you get to know their strengths. So when you build that pool of talent, make sure you do write down the notes. 
I learned this from our great sales and marketing person, Victor. He always, when the new person he met, he always write down their, you know, their interest and specialty in the part of their business card. I apply the same to meet the students. When I met them, they add me to the LinkedIn. In my spreadsheet, I actually have their name and their contact information, and what they like about it, what their future one they do, what their strengths. Sometimes you may don't have a position for them right now, but in the future, you have other roles and you remember you have those great talent you meet. You feel like, oh, this is the right person. Even I don't have the right position at the moment, but I know in the future I can find them and hire them later. We did hire people through that method many times. So when I said we put people on file, I truly really put on the file. Also, I, I want to encourage you invite your technical people like director development or managers uh, from development or your tech leads go to those events not just hr functions because in order to get to know the programmers and the developers you need somebody who also in the same passion with them and can and talk in the same languages and then get to know them more than uh, you know just the administration side of course your hr person also going with you so that way they can answer uh, the you know, culture and also generic like HR questions for the students as well. You can empower your staffs, go to colleges and universities to be a mentor. Uh, we have a lot of staff mentor in local colleges and using their volunteer times and they build that connection. They build a lot of a good connection and those students come to us say, we really want to work for Digital Kina because I sell your company and spend time to get no people. And then be in the school program advisory board. I'm in three different schools advisory board and helping them to foster the next nice two years, the curriculum. Sometimes take university and colleges many years to you know, change their curriculum. But if you're on the advisory board, sometimes they can take your consideration when you talk about different technologies and what students need to learn. They take that in, they do a survey, and we're helping shape things in you know, the future, what the course they can be taught. The fact may be not affect immediately, but in long term is a payoff. Also, teaching, the first very important is like try to teach what you know. We started teaching Drupal courses at local college three years ago. We're facilitating this free course in a local college called Fanshawe College in London. We provide the fundamental of Drupal training students the, from four different programs. The training now cr only create a pipeline for us, also create a big pipeline for entire Canada or even the worldwide. We're really proud partner up with the local college, did this three years program for now. And we started in 2017. We connect the program coordinator with used to be really uh, a advisory board and the person I always, you know, mentor. And he was really impressed by how it can grow. So we connect, we build this program and we, um, we find our uh, staffs from uh, to volunteer to their times to do this program. We proud to see this program run so successfully, even other local agencies follow our footstep. And they start teaching in last year, the year before. So what college gonna provide when we partner with the college? They provide a recommended student list. They have a core, already filtered the list what student could take this course. And they also communicate to students about the course and they also provide the classrooms and the, the facilities like computer labs. And they also schedule the works between the students and our staffs. So what to take, uh, who's taking those uh, 12 weeks uh, Drupal courses then? The tw it's 12 weeks free course is offered to the other students in four different programs, around like 20 students. You probably ask why only why is only 20 students because we want to make sure the classroom size is reasonable enough we can do workshops and also we can coach and helping those 20 students sometimes it's 24 because we usually have our four co-ops who already applied uh, ikina also join this program as well so who are the teachers is a great talents from our staff they taught by our staff 
and from introduction to Drupal, to set building and to layouts and theming and to module development and also to set performance. The teacher are like, uh, for example, Jordan had a great session yesterday. We have a Luke, Scott, Tanner, Martin, and Kaylin, and many, many tech leads and who also teach this class before. Some of them are Drupal grandmasters, some are Drupal certified developers. They are our senior staff and tech leads. Talk about why the, each person teaching, like there's only one course, why we want six people to teach one course. Uh, there is a really uh, message behind this. First of all, those are, they have their, even though they are grandmaster, they know everything, but each person has their passion areas. So they focus on the specialty areas to teach the students, also give the student a chance to know six different type of developers and senior developers. So they can get mentored by six different uh, style of developers. And they focus on each area, each person teaching two classes. That way also is good for the teacher as well, because remember, they also our full-time staff. They also have available hours, they have projects. They are, because they are senior developers and Drupal Grandmaster, they usually have a lot of project work as well. So that way take them only two classes per term. So it's something capable they do with their time. And also it's benefit to the students to connect them after because each Developers have a different strengths. We want to give the student expose a different type strengths of uh, talent. So why is a Drupal uh, class uh, for the 12 weeks? Because we can cover more and each week only have one class and then there's uh, some practice they can do after. We intro to the Drupal, set up the Drupal site as the first one. We also introduce the workflow. Because in the college and university, usually they don't really work at a real agency's a workflow. So you got to teach them how to the real gate workflow work with Drupal, with the setups. And then we start to teaching set building. We also teaching theming and the module development. And in the end, we'll teach them how to launch and set performance, accessibility, and so on. And in the last one, we usually do a once a workshop to cover any Q and A's, things they have questions than before. And each class usually is uh, three hour long. So why all of, only offer this course from January to April? Because those are para, prepared for the uh, graduate students. Because right now, you're in January to April, that's before the last term, before the graduation. Also, they can pair it up with our internship program. So now they are not only get learned from the class, they also climb can apply for the internship program also starting January to April and start to practice as well. And right before they graduate and the learning a lot of uh, hand-on applications because we try to give them like hand-on exercise. As a part of the Drupal training and the intern co-ops, they also get to build a one project in the end. I see some questions in the uh, in the chat already. I will start to answer those questions after the slide, if you don't mind. And also, if you have a question for me, um, please um, prefix the queue so I know uh, we can, I can answer that end of this uh, session. Also, we have some teachers right here can help answer the question as well. Okay, back to my session. Long-term investment. This is a really long-term investment because I calculated how long going to take doing between the January and April, the teacher class uh, time is between 182 hours to 200 hours. This is not including how the preparation time, but it, what they include is like annual student selection time. The 20 student is select, get interviewed, not everybody go to the program because we want to make sure the people who actually want to learn to do the program. And also there's a lot of coordination time and uh, correlation with the teacher. And the teacher uh, had to take away from their project time to working on as a teacher. And the sixth teacher away from the project, that means we, you know, that time equal money. <laughs> and the presentation preparation also take time as well. After the class, there's Q and A's, 
there's SSS reviews, and also uh, we get together, you know, talk about the student performance and giving feedbacks and so on. Just just give you an idea how much time you if you want to do this for free, how much time at least you need to invest in that term. This is not include to prepare the uh, materials, and we also teach in you know we partner with Archaea. Like in Archaea, they have a good training curriculum already, so we build on top of that. So why are we teaching Drupal course in a college for free? Because training the future interns and co-ops and potential for the full-time staffs to get to know the students. And through the course, attracting the stu to student to know our company culture. Also, ensuring our Drupal product lead, our tech lead to practicing, and they also learn more by teaching uh, the Drupal. So you, you get best through teaching. Also, it's starting to see our staffs learn becomes giving so much opportunity to teach. They start also teaching our clients and they get asking so many different presentation events because teaching is a great way to practice your presentation as well. It's also helped a number of like Drupal trained developers in London, Ontario. We have a lot of uh, trained uh, developers. They not necessarily all work in Kina because we can't really hire 20 students right after they graduate. Once they get trained, they apply for other Drupal companies in Canada or even in states. Another best reason we want to teach in the financial college is the best way to learn is to teach by Frank, which I think Jordan uh, in here and could be and Tanner's also in the chat as well. They couldn't be great. I think they told me many times they learn more as when they're teaching and coaching others. So here's the we summary of the roadmap. When you're seeding, so when you plant the seeds like a garden, you first you had your soil right, your company culture right, and you plant the seeds to get to know them and you get they get know you through Drupal classes. And now we talk about internships and co-ops. So you can steer that to coach them before they become full-time staff. So coach for growth, this is the last point I'm gonna talk about today, is make sure your internship programs um, and the co-op program is for the coaching. It's not for you know a cheap labor. It's, they are, we're always supporting a paid internship, but the internship is mostly for investment. You're not only teaching, them in the class in, and you also now they actually get to know your company and in the real projects. Our internship program lasts two months to four months. They usually part-time because the college students, they still have a class. So they come in one day to two days per week to uh, do the project. They usually have four uh, internships together. We give them a pro bono project and its contribution to the nonprofit in local. So we give them a tech lead and project managers to help them to get them through the whole process. So they will learn not only the coding, they will learn how to build a site from ground, from the setup to launch, and they learn the whole project management process as well. And also we have a co-op program. The co-op program is a bit different. The reason the co-op is that usually from four months long to 16 months long. And those are partnered with college and universities. They need to have the co-op in order to graduate. They usually hear the full summer or the uh, full year for the entire co-op. It's almost like a full time, but they, it's from school. And usually they finish the co-op, they go back to school. And doing the onboarding those co-ops, you get to, they get trained with the real work environment. Not all the internships and co-ops going to become full-time in the future. However, those are great seeding programs. Make sure they get out trained and, and get to know you and you get to know whose strengths. So in the future, if they do become full-time, you know where to place them. So always make sure that learning environment empowers the students and the co-ops to shine because you never know what other skills that they had before you, you just if you just look at their resume. We have an online onboarding uh, learning system. It's great system is on our internet. It's helped 
self-learning and evaluating onboarding program. And we check in, make sure their peer mentor check in the progress and consistent training. And we track, you know, the recorders and also have products integrated with the learning. This internet helped us great during the pandemic time. We had onboarding three co-ops through the uh, online system. So we also keep that consistency. We, we already know how to onboarding people online. This really helped us during the pandemic time. So we have right now the few new cops and they already gave me great feedback about how the system is so consistent and useful. They also gave us the feedbacks. And again, it's our own internet product. So they also using it and they can also help to improve it. So we have everything in place to the onboarding, but very important part, not just about learning, is about also building the relationships. Benjamin said, tell me I'll forget, teach me I'll remember, and involve me I'll learn. That's why we really want to really stress about you know, internships and co-ops, because we pair them up with mentors. Each co-op has one peer mentor with them. They are part of a leadership training. In order to become a tech lead in, in Kina, you first need to know how to mentor others. So training others and to also train yourself because it will help your current employee to learn how to delegate and how to manage in times and how to take you know, active role in onboarding. Because as a mentor, it can be very difficult with uh, juggle your own work and also helping somebody else with their complete their work. So have your employees to become a mentor of the co-op internship that's a great practice as well. So we're gonna, in the next few slides, I'm gonna talk about how to be a great mentor. The first one is set expectation clear. And on the both side, not just the certification for the mentee, also the mentee said it like clear expectation for the mentor as well. For example, send clear expectation about when you want to mentee to try to solve the problem first before coming to your solution. Can you teach them how to search the right Google terms to find the solution? And then let them to show you when you want to be approached. And give feedback regular to your mentees and that how they're doing because some of the co-ops and students, uh, they are maybe a little bit shy. If you don't go to product and reach them out, they may not ask you any question because sometimes they're still learning. They may not know what they should ask. And also celebrate their achievement, even just the little ones. Even just they solve some problem and very small you feel like it's pretty easy for you, but celebrate with them to encouraging them to solve more problems on their own. And give your mentees you know, that benefit working with you. Sometimes what is easy for you, it doesn't mean it's easy for your mentees. You do this, for example, you're building Drupal site so many years, you know all those terms. To you, you know exactly which module to use, how to do this hook. But for your mentee, they even don't have computer science degree or uh, from, you know, a college diploma, but they not necessarily understand those terms yet. So make sure you let them to shadow you to meetings or when you work on tickets, let them take a look how you're problem solving. And also don't be strict in teaching technology only and also teaching them soft skills. This is a, sometimes a lot of time if you have a great mentor, they also teach you more than soft skills than just the hard skills. Accept the safe room for your mentees, provide positive enforcement and stay open-minded and put the office of policy aside and go extra miles to help them. They're really going to be grateful, even though in the future they don't work with your company as your full time, but they will stay in touch with that relationship. Over the years, I mentor so many people, even these days they may not work in Vikina anymore, but I'm still in touch with them because I see them growing in the Drupal community. I see them in growing in other areas. They maybe even become like a company owner by now and they become our clients. They become our contractors. Build that relationship, build that relationship now, plan your seat and be a mentor is rewarding for yourself as well. Because when you see 
the people grows and you see them become excellent, you feel happy inside. You know why your job make a value. Also, in the summary, being great mentor is pushing hard than the mentee expected and get the mentees to ask the right questions and spend, you know, is you know, make sure they are being you know curious and continuous improvement. Even they become full time, they still need to be coached and dare them to dream big. And make sure they are, we all are lifelong students. We are teaching, we're coaching, we also learning ourselves. I learned so much things from the people I coach every day. And appreciate self-taught mentees, and encourage them and coach them and teach what you think, how to think, not to what you think. Exactly. This kind of tricky word, just how do you think? How do you search in Google? How do you solve the problem? Not exactly the end result, because sometimes when you teach how you think, it's going to help in a long way. As a mentee, it sometimes can be imitating to have a bunch of questions when you look busy. So it's important to tell your mentees how to communicate with you. In Kina, we use Slack. We usually tell the mentees, if I have my headphone on today, that means I'm busy. Please send me Slack message. Said, can I have you know question with you and then set up a time. But if you tell the mentee the advice the time and how frequently and how you want to be communicated, it's much better and they'll feel comfortable. Otherwise, if they sell you always busy, probably you are, and they will free to ask your questions. So end of the this uh, session, I want to summarizing. The three things we talk about how to build your own pipeline, prepare your culture style and make sure your culture is attracting place to people. And also plan your seats and how do you do online? Like, do you do uh, teaching? Do you do equal internships? Do you go to events? And think about once you have those people, how you're gonna coach them. I also want to talk a little bit about right now. The future thoughts. The future thoughts is become the remote talent is available now. The local talent also working for the remote companies. As the companies, managers and leaders, well, our question is now we are no longer just limiting our local spot now. Because sometimes in the past, a lot of people prefer working in the office. After the COVID, everybody working from home, a lot of people get used to that working remote and they are okay with working remote. So you're competing, not just your local company anymore. You compete the big companies globally. How are we going to prepare our culture to adopting those change? Can we have a remote and also people in the office, the hybrid role? What type of culture we need to change to make our agency attractive for people from all you know, different parts of the city? And also make sure the people who in our city you know, still growing and growing with us. And another thing, doing you plan those seats? Could we do online trainings? Can we open up our online colleges and partner with more colleges, not just the, our local colleges? A lot of things in my mind. I think a lot of opportunity out there. And for the coaching for the girls, onboarding, mentoring online is definitely different. If you want to talk to me afterwards, we've had some experiencing this year, particularly about the mentor people, our co-op, some from Vancouver and some is even local, but still from home. How are we going to deliver the machine to them? How we coach them, how we build activities online, still make them feel that that culture, you know, experiencing that digital experience. And I think I only have a few minutes for questions. Uh, right now, if you have any questions, you can put in the chat system and I'm happy to answer. Also, here's my contact information as well, uh, because I talk a little bit longer today. Um, my session's up. And if you have any questions, you can always approach to me, pay me in the DrupalCon. Also, uh, you can also uh, through the different contact information to get, get hold of me as well. I'm happy to uh, answer all the questions. I see John have a question here. Okay. Okay. Also, the question is: Do you do this remotely as well as in person? How do you do work for remote companies? 
is about the uh, uh, onboarding or co-ops. Okay. As I mentioned, we do this um, for the college. Is right now it's all like in the college. It's not uh, it's in person training. We think about in the future how we're going to remote. But our co ops, they are like remote, at least this year. And if I have a question, when it comes to the cost, how big is the proportion of the cost of all the training programs combined to your overall cost? You have an online platform, your staff is preparing and giving courses. They do go events, your whole events. It seemed to me that all oh, this is quite amazing, but also very costly. How much time the working time is your staff doing these things? As I mentioned, for the training is, um, I have an exact number, right? As uh, in one of my slides, it's 182 to 200 hours. Okay, I think that's, is any other questions? And um, the session's almost end. And please fill out the survey. If you don't have any questions, I will get offline soon. <laughs> and if you had also question particularly now asking today, you can always approach me after. And thank you. And your survey is helps us to get improved. Thank you very much. Sorry, I just go through the chat to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay. Thank you, everybody attending. I just stay here for a few more minutes. <laughs> I think the next session starting in eight minutes, I have, uh, before next session starts, I have eight minutes to make sure I didn't miss anybody in the chat. Oh, I just saw Chris ask, um, what are progresses for these classes? Those are students are our uh, college and university students. They are at least like in the college uh, and university at least for two years already. It's their last year. So progress is, is they are already know programming. They now know three uh, PHP programmers. They did teach, uh, they learned the programming in the colleges. That usually is computer science or internet web application program and program analyst program students. And those are uh, the progresses. They don't have to be uh, solid, um, like a learning CMS before. Okay, I think I went through all the questions. Will you be able to share your slides? Yes, I can share my slides, Mark, and I'll post it. Um, yeah, send, send me a message, I'll post to you. I actually prepared this slide, but I think, uh, I'm not sure you're still here. Um, Mark, I'll send you a message. Um, about my slide uh, drag link. Okay. I'm going to leave the the um, the videos so I can set mark the the slides. Okay. Here I'll share you the slides right now. Just give me a second. It's a Google Slides. So I'm just going to share you the link.
<laughs> Do you see the slides? Okay, good. Good. If you have any questions, you can always uh, send me a message. Oh, it's Alpha Tima. Thank you. I'm really happy to see you. Thank you very much. I think I'm going to turn on my camera now. I'm going to stay in the chat system just for a little bit, but I'm going to uh, stop sharing the slides and I'm going to leave the session so other people can come in. <laughs>